Hi everyone, whilst we're waiting for summer to arrive this year, I thought I'd just do a quick video on what we've done in terms of installing our new battery bank, solar panels, and also the Victron products that you can see behind me in the blue boxes there, as well as our um, charge inverter and also our battery setup. Um, I'll go through the tools that I used, uh, or which I found really useful when I installed the system, um, also where we got everything from, and also uh, the new solar panels that we put in, and just also the performance of what it's done over the last year so you can see whether it's uh, something that you may want to consider. Right, first off, you'll notice behind me I've got two inverters, one in the grey box and one in a blue box. The grey box, which is a GrowWatt inverter, uh, was installed when we had the initial solar panels installed about 10 years ago now, and they were just a, a sort of bog standard four kilowatt array that we had on the roof um, on the barn here. And the, inver the grey inverter behind me is just simply converting the solar panel power from those panels into 230 volt uh, power or voltage that goes straight into the house. Now they've been there about 10 years but I wanted to add um, a battery bank and also some new solar panels because we use quite a lot of power here in the house and also the office and the all the fridges and freezers and everything that we've got going on here. So um, I was trying to save electricity especially in the last uh, couple of years ago when electricity prices shot up through the roof. So first things first, the system that we had before, uh, the GrowWatt uh, with the panels on the roof, I didn't touch. I didn't do anything at all to that system. I just left it alone. I didn't uh, unplug anything. I just had it there. Um, in fact, the same wiring is there as uh, what was installed 10 years ago. So I didn't touch uh, the old system at all. It still works. It just works in conjunction with the additional um, solar panels and battery bank that I've installed. Um, so I'll move on to the uh, the new charge inverter, which I've got behind me. Now it's a charge inverter from Victron. Um, I've paid for all of this myself. I've not sort of been sponsored by anybody like that. And the reason why um, it's called a charge inverter is because it's got a dual role. It charges the batteries up and it also um, converts the 230 volts into 48 volts in our case, or 48 volts back into 230 volts for the uh, the house. So it's a charge inverter. I got the 8,000, I don't know if you can see it there, the 48, uh, 48 volt, 8,000, um, 110 amp, Multi plus two. Now, with hindsight, I probably should have gone for the 5,000. Um, 8,000 is probably overdoing it a bit, really, but it just gives um, a lot more power to the batteries if required and also uh, back into the grid, or sorry, back into the house if I need it. Now, what tells this thing to do what it does is the little blue box next to it here, which is the Serbo GX box, which essentially is the brains of the uh, the whole system. It takes information from the battery bank, the solar panels, um, how much current is being used by the house or how much current is going backwards and forwards um, in the system and it, it tells the charge inverter exactly what to do, i.e. whether to put um, charge into the batteries or whether to invert power from the batteries back into the grid. Uh, I keep saying grid, I don't mean grid, I mean back into the house at 230 volts. So the brains of the system is this thing here. So I've got an internet connection here, I've got um, various buses which talk to uh, other parts of the system, uh, the flashy bit um, up there which you can see, uh, that one goes all the way back to the house and back to the electricity meter so that um, tells the system how much power is being taken um, in the house or on the rest of the, the system and various other blue cables that communicate either with the charge inverter or the uh, distribution board which I'll show you in a second. Okay so behind me are the three modular bits and pieces to the system and that first of all is the Lynx power in uh, which essentially is the battery connection so I've got uh, the negative and positive and uh, they just literally just go down to the uh, the battery back. So you can treat um, power in also as power out, it's just to and from the battery. Next one across is the Lynx shunt and uh, that's got a huge great big fuse inside it, uh, lots of clever uh, electronic gizmetry uh, inside it uh, with a communication cable that comes out and back into the Servo GX and that really just records how much current is just flowing backwards and forwards uh, to the battery or from the battery. And then at the end there, I've got a distribution box, which is a really neat way of combining uh, solar panels and um, I don't know, various other bits and pieces that you've got coming into the system, uh, mainly solar panels, to be honest. Uh, and also the big cables coming out of that 
go back to the um, charge inverter at the end. Uh, again, I've got uh, communication cables and all sorts of things coming out at the bottom there, which goes back to the Servo GX. Now, going into the distribution box, in my case, I've only got uh, one load of solar panels. So if I go up, uh, I've got my charge controller, which sits up there, which is isolated coming into it and also out of it as well. And uh, the car charge controller in this case is a um, one specifically for a 48 volt system. And because you've got varying voltages on the solar panels throughout the day, all this little gadget does is just controls how much voltage comes out and back into the um, distribution box and then back into the uh, battery. So it's always at the correct voltage. What is really, really nice is the um, little control panel up here, which is a sort of a monitoring system as well as a, a sort of setup um, type affair where you can, if I just go onto that as well, you can see exactly what's happening in the system. Uh, you can see what the uh, what we're taking from the grid up there, 47 watt or 50 odd watts, uh, what our load is, um, which at the moment is about 1.2 kilowatts, uh, the state of the battery, which is 96%, and also a little figure, I don't know if you can read it, it says about 1.2 kilowatts is coming from the battery. So all of our power requirements are really just coming from the battery at the moment. Um, it tells you how much power is coming from the solar panels, which because it's sort of night time or getting towards night time and the uh, sun is setting quite quickly, uh, it's about 45 watts from the solar panels, which isn't very much. And then um, also the facility on the um, charge inverter is that uh, you can also have critical loads, which means if you have a power's main cut, uh, sorry, a mains power cut, uh, you can also power circuits and things just purely from the battery without any mains um, input or grid input at all. Coming down here is where we have our battery bank, and I decided in the end to use the Pylantec uh, batteries. I've got four 3000 US 3000 C uh, batteries here, and um, I did find these ones really simple to uh, install. Essentially, they're all wired together. And uh, again, we've got communication cables coming out uh, here, for example. Again, that goes back to that sort of brain box, um, Serbo GX uh, box, which tells you or tells the machine exactly how much power is in the batteries and how much is flowing out of it, all the rest of it. These are communication cables linking all the, um, the batteries together um, so that the um, machine or the Serbo GX knows the state of charge of each battery. Really nice simple connectors on these batteries to make it a nice um, easy installation. Everything's earthed on the, the batteries there as well. And the batteries are 14 kilowatts, I think, altogether. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that basically does us. That's fine for us. Uh, we find that in the winter time, when there isn't much sunshine um, doing anything really, um, either to charge the batteries or to power the house, um, all we're doing is charging the battery bank from uh, the grid at night time when it's a slightly cheaper um, rate of electricity. So that really helps um, in winter time. So most of our grid power now, uh, the stuff we buy in from the electricity companies, most of it is the nighttime rate. Um, the daytime rate um, maybe in the depths of winter uh, we use a bit at daytime rate and then come about this time of year about March April time then the solar panels start to take over and uh, start charging the uh, battery bank by themselves without having the need to use any grid power um, even at night time and come about May time the whole system is uh, being powered off um, solar panels, powering the battery bank, powering the house, powering everything like that. And uh, we don't really use any um, power from the grid at all. So we're not totally off grid, we're just low grid, if you know what I mean. Uh, we, need, we need grid power, but we don't use a lot of it, which um, I'm really pleased about. Right, what I'll do now is I'll take you outside and show you the new solar panels that we installed. Uh, the mounting system that we used, I say system, that's sort of a bit grand really, it was just a whole load of metal bits chucked together in a grid that I mounted the solar panels onto, but I'll show you exactly um, the bits that I used and also um, you know, the angles that I put the solar panels at as well. So follow me and we'll go outside. Right, so okay, we've got uh, these rather good um, solar panels. I'll put in the description below uh, exactly what um, company I bought them from but these are 400 watt panels or there or thereabouts and I've got six of them 
uh, all the way uh, across there. Uh, they're quite big and they're quite heavy, as I found out, so I needed a pretty sturdy frame to uh, mount them on. So what I used um, are these uh, channels, they're galvanised uh, steel uh, channels. I think these ones are 40 mil um, square and these ones, I think from memory, are 23 mil by 40 mil. And they're quite good because what you can do is you can build them up in, um, into a frame uh, just using some very simple fixings like this one here, for example, which you could just bolt things onto them. Um, and what I did with mine is I used um, a series of uh, hinges, uh, one there, one down there, and also uh, one at the top there, which means that I can um, point, you know, I can actually undo some nuts and bolts and things and actually move the, uh, the whole frame up and down if I needed to. But what I'm finding is that uh, in the winter time, which is when I'm really sort of um, low on sunshine, uh, is angling these around about sort of 20 degrees or there or thereabouts is perfect for winter because at the peak of the, um, the day in winter uh, then these face perpendicular to the, uh, the sun and that's, that's perfect. In the summertime these panels uh, don't work quite so hard because the panels on top of the roof here um, do uh, most of the work. Um, so I, I think I'm just going to leave these at, uh, just fixed as it were. But anyway, they're angled, uh, which is the most important thing, rather than just being flat on the, uh, the side of the, uh, the barn here. Now, to fix the panels on themselves, I've used these um, S brackets, um, which are, again, I'll put in the description exactly where I got them from. They just hold on with Allen bolts, held on with Allen bolts there, and uh, the the clip, or not, it's not really a clip, it's just a sort of S, S, you can see the shape of it, it's like a Z or an S, and that just bolts the um, solar panel down on the end there. Now when you've got uh, two solar panels next door to each other, um, I'm using a slightly different fitting, uh, which clamps the two solar panels onto the frame like that, and I've repeated that um, at the top there and all the way along at each join. So all these solar panels give me roughly two and a half kilowatts of extra power in addition to the ones which I've got on the, on the roof. And uh, these ones just purely charge the batteries up. That's all they do. They don't do anything else except just charge the batteries up. And um, yeah, I found them really good. I've had these ones in for about six months now. One thing I did forget to say is that I've um, got six panels here and they're arranged as um, three in series and then two lots of three uh, in parallel, so it's a 3S2P, I think that's how they describe it really. Um, that gives me, um, I think, a better configuration on the solar charge controller which I've got inside. Um, I sort of, again, on the forums, which were really good, they suggested it, having it that way rather than two in series and three in parallel. Um, that wasn't quite uh, such a good setup. So I've got, uh, say, these, these three here uh, all joined together and these three behind me all joined together, and then those, those two sets of three are joined in parallel. Right, talking of series and parallel and joining everything up together, I've used various connections, um, which are really just sort of plug-in uh, connections, and I'll show you those in a second. Um, but on the end, I've also got um, fused um, connections as well, and I'm using four millimeter cable throughout, and that seems to have worked really well for me. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, well done. I'm sorry for rabbiting on for so long about uh, uh, what I've done in this um, system. Um, I promised you at the end that I would show you the tools that I used, which I found just really, really helpful to do a fairly neat job on this. Um, the first one is, uh, is this thing here, uh, which is a pneumatic uh, crimper. Um, now, you're going to have some fairly heavy-duty cables to crimp onto to make the terminals and everything. Um, and what this does, it applies so much pressure that you can get some really nice, I don't know if you can see that at all, but really nice terminals um, crimped onto the cables. And so um, you've got different sizes that you can um, put in there for different, sorry, different sized um, clips that you can put into the, uh, the gadget there. Uh, for the various different sized uh, cables that you're going to do, but this um, just makes it a really nice um, finish to it, and you can put a, a sort of heat um, a heat shrink 
wrap onto the end of the lugs and that just finishes off completely. So that's that's really nice. So that's one tool I found very, very useful. Um, the other tool which I found uh, quite handy was um, a cable tester because there's quite a lot of um, communication cables that you don't have to um, make up yourself. You can buy them in obviously, uh, but if you are going to make them yourself, that's a good little tester. And um, the other thing which I found very handy was also the um, this tool here, which I'll put on the screen, um, which was good for actually um, stripping the, I think they're RJ45 cables, um, which uh, would came in very handy as well. Nothing in this system is difficult. Uh, I think if you're fairly competent in, um, in, in tackling electric tricks and things like that then you can probably do this but as with all things if you're not too sure get some professional advice get some expert um, who knows exactly what they're doing if you you know if you're not too sure uh, that's probably the safest thing but um, after doing quite a lot of research I felt pretty confident that I could tackle this project on my own and uh, it's it's proved to be um, really good really successful here are just a few screenshots from the uh, app that you can have with the Victron equipment. You can see our usage uh, throughout the year uh, dipping severely down in the uh, summer months to the point where we really don't um, buy in much electricity at all from the grid. And uh, in the winter months when it's uh, obviously um, pretty low and the sun is pretty low in the sky, uh, we do use a lot more from the grid, but um, that's probably to be expected. I'm sure some of you have got loads of questions that uh, you want to ask me about how I set you know, various things up, uh, which I've really just sort of skated through in this video, to be honest. Um, if you have, then um, by all means put them in the comments. Um, I'll try and answer as many as I can. Um, I'm not an expert, I'm not an installer, I just did this system myself. But um, yeah, if you've got some glaringly obvious question that you're not quite sure of and you think I can answer it, then <laughs> by all means put it in the comments section and I'll see what I can do. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. As I say, it's just to run through what the system, what we've got here. And uh, if I've got any other uh, things that I can um, give you in terms of updates and uh, anything else that I add to the system, then I'll put it in another video. But until the next one, and hopefully the next video will be a vineyard video because it's getting that time of year um, that everything starts to wake up and things start happening there. So until the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye for now.